What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, like always guys, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 14th of March in 2019, as well as some other stocks and ETFs that did very well today that I personally see potential in here over these next couple of weeks. So for everybody out there that finds value value in these videos, you enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. It really does support me and supports the growth of this channel. And if you're new to this channel and you want to stay further connected with our community, feel free to go down below. There are two links, the free Discord group chat as well as the free Facebook group. I guarantee you guys you'll find a ton, a ton of value in those two communities, so feel free to get in down below. And without further ado, let's talk about what ended up happening today in the overall markets. And guys, I'm sure you already know, as you can tell here from the prices, it was a pretty boring day, right? The SPX ended up closing the day down about $2.44, down about 0.09%. So really no movement at all in terms of the SPX. The Dow Jones ended up closing the day green by a very slight margin, up about $7, up about 0.03%. So not much movement there either. And the NASDAQ Composite actually had the biggest move here, down about $27 at the close roughly down about 0.37% and it's looking like we are getting that pullback in the NASDAQ that we were talking about in yesterday's video. So let's talk about some technical points here in the SPX and of course we'll get into the Dow and then we'll get into the NASDAQ. So some things I want to talk about very briefly are we got some news that Trump and the president of China, they're delaying their meeting to April or something like that, which could indicate some of the uh, doubts that we saw in the market today, some of the uh, really the lack of movement that we saw in the market today. We also got news about the housing data. Single family homes did not do well in the month of January. The first quarter right now isn't looking too good in terms of that aspect. So these are some things that could have weighed down on the markets today, which really in turn didn't allow the market to fluctuate and flourish and push up to those higher levels that we really expected or I actually expected yesterday and what I talked about in yesterday's video. And that's just really, uh, you know, what I got from that news. And we can see here, you know, on, on a technical basis, guys, we really got rejected and really had difficulties getting above this 2815 resistance level that we've been talking about here in terms of the SPX over the past, um, you know, really the day or two that we've been trading right below this level, we've been having difficulties getting above it. And if we take a look here at the 20 day one hour, we can see that a little bit more clear, right? Yesterday, we ended up topping off at about 2821 got rejected at that level. We pushed down. This morning, I believe, we ended up gapping down a bit. Ended up gapping down a bit to about 2,800 flat. Then we popped back up to about 2,815. Had struggles breaking above that level. Then we ended up closing the day down about 2,808. So on a technical basis right now, guys, we're really trading in between the levels of 2800, 2790-ish, 2800, and 2820. We're back in that horizontal pattern that we traded in a couple of weeks back during this time period. We can see here, you know, from about the 25th of February all the way to about the 4th of March, we were trading in this level uh, in between these two levels, and that's exactly what it's looking like we are doing right now at the close of the 14th, um, the 14th of March uh, trading day, right? And you know, guys, tomorrow, you know, it's going to be a pretty interesting thing. What are we going to end up doing here? Are we going to end up popping above 2820? Are we going to end up pulling back down on this news about the the housing data and, uh, you know, the, the, the trade war, the tensions between that and pushing the deal back to March, or not March, April, and potentially even later because we know that Trump 
tends to, you know, push back dates. You know, this is going to have some tensions in the markets and really investors, traders, this might scare some people off. Who knows? We might start selling off again. These are just levels that I'm keeping an eye on here. One being 2820. Are we going to break out of that level to then hold that as a new support and then try and test, you know, the 2870 of resistance, which would be the next level? Or are we going to sell off tomorrow and break the 2790 level, the 2800? ish level support which in that case that's going to 100% confirm the rejection here at the resistance and we could end up pushing down even further if that does end up happening so these are some levels that I'm watching in terms of the S&P 500 the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies so the Dow Jones today like I said up about seven dollars at the close and we're still trading below the 50 SMA resistance here and the resistance at about $25,800, which was a resistance back in the beginning of uh, December in 2018. Obviously, we sold off very heavily, making that level a resistance. We briefly popped above it towards the end of February in 2019. Then we sold off here, held this old resistance at about 25,400 as a new support, which really constituted the continuation of the uptrend pattern. And now we've been having difficulty breaking out of these levels Mostly because, guys, the Boeing the Boeing stock, we all know by now the two plane crashes in a six-month period, this stock has a huge weight on the Dow Jones, which really has held it down from getting out of those resistance levels here over the past couple of days. Like I said in yesterday's video, if Boeing stock did not fall 30, how, 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 how much was it, like uh, like 100 points or something like that, 80 to 100 points, you know, the Dow Jones probably would be back up, you know, roughly in this area here in this horizontal channel, in my personal opinion, right? But as of right now, you know, we're trading in this horizontal channel between 25,400 and about 25,800. And tomorrow, what I'm going to be waiting for, guys, is whether or not we're going to break this resistance to hold it as a new support, or, or are we going to get rejected here, slowly start to sell off to the support here at about 25400 And that's really going to be the formation of that head and shoulders pattern that we've been kind of eyeing up here over the past couple of trading videos and trading days here in terms of the Dow Jones, which could constitute some more selling, especially if we break this level and slowly head down to the $25,000 flat, maybe even to the $24,000 level. That's going to be a huge bearish move in terms of the Dow Jones. So on the 20-day, one-hour, guys, we can see, you know, it's still under the resistance of the 180 SMA that we were talking about in yesterday's video. And this is going to be a level that I'm watching here on the 20-day, one-hour chart. And like I say in pretty much every video, guys, it's super important to look at multiple different time frames, draw out trend lines on multiple different time frames so you can understand the price action of the stock, ETF, index, future, whatever you're looking at. This will make your technical analysis analysis easier and it'll make it easier for you to understand you know what you're looking at right and where the price could potentially be headed to so that's the Dow Jones guys nothing crazy again really flat boring day today to be completely honest with you guys and the Nasdaq here got that little pullback that we were waiting for and talked about in yesterday's video we all know the Nasdaq has been doing very well better than the other two indices the Dow and the S&P off the bounce here at the on the 180 SMA we broke the 50 SMA we broke this first resistance at about 7100 the second one at about 7200 and now we finally started to see a little pullback in this horizontal channel that we're trading in between the new support at around 7200 and the resistance at about 7375. So in terms of the technical basis here on the NASDAQ, I'm looking to see are we going to pull down even further and hold this level as a new support before we slowly start to fill the gap back up to the $7,375 level if we do end up having a couple more green days here. But again, there is some negative sentiment out there right now in the markets, which did, you know, hold the markets back today in my personal opinion. So if we're just taking a look 
at the 20 day one hour chart we can see the top at about 7300 the double top and the double top is a bearish formation that we look out for for potential bearish move potential downside in the stock ETF index or a future and this double top occurred the first one occurred at 11 a.m. yesterday the second one occurred around 6 a.m. 5 6 a.m. this morning this is obviously the future which is why we can see that uh, price action and then for the you know pretty much for the whole day guys we were pushing down in price you know that double top really you know constituted some bearish action today in terms of the Nasdaq so that is what I'm looking at in terms of the overall markets right now guys nothing too crazy in terms of the close of the market today but tomorrow and uh, Friday actually no tomorrow is Friday guys tomorrow is going to be a huge telltale of what could be happening this next week guys because if we end up pulling back drastically tomorrow that could paint a picture for next week where we could potentially be selling off even further but let's say tomorrow we have a green day we break these levels in the SPX the next week on a technically speaking basis here we could potentially be headed a bit higher so I'm playing it by ear you know I'm going to see what the large caps the futures are doing in the morning before planning out any trades here but my gut feeling right now is telling me that we are going to sell off tomorrow that's just what my gut feeling is telling me I could be 100% wrong let me know down below in the comment section what do you guys think are you bearish on the markets right now on a short-term basis do you think we're going to do something like this where we're going to sell off a bit and form you know another double top this could be a double top here if we do end up selling off the first top the second top that could be a formation occurring right now what do you guys think let me know down below in the comment section so what did I end up trading today guys at first in the beginning of the day you know I was pretty busy today guys I didn't really trade at all in the beginning of the day today but I actually got to my computer at the perfect time and I caught a quick little TVIX trade as the SPX was selling off during this time period right here from about 12 p.m. down to about 3 p.m. I didn't hold TVIX this whole time but this is the time period of where I traded TVIX and for those of you guys that don't know TVIX is an ETF that I trade that goes up in price whenever the SPX is selling off and let me show you guys the big spike that TVIX actually ended up having today you know roughly around that time period of about 12 to 1 o'clock eastern standard all the way to about 205 p.m this is the move that i did end up catching today in terms of tvix i didn't catch the entire move if i did from the bottom to the top that would have been a 3.2 percent move but i did end up catching a 1.2 percent day trade on tvix and what really um uh attracted me to this ETF first and foremost was this double bottom here at about 2630 2640 and just like a double top is a bearish move a double bottom is a bullish um, you know bullish pattern that we look out for for a more potential upside so we got that double bottom here we broke up very quickly very quickly here we did the little pullback then we start to raise back up to the 2670 level. And this is where I ended up taking a little position in terms of TVIX. And at about 130, we can see the SPX, which is what it correlates to at about 130. Let's see where this one was at. This was at about 2810. And this is literally when it dropped all the way down to about 2806, which caused that big spike in TVIX. And I was able to capitalize about a 1.2% move here from about you know one uh, what was it like 1 30 p.m eastern standard up about 1.2 percent and that's where i ended up taking my profits roughly at about 27 dollars per share in terms of tvix and we do see some movement here after hours of tvix continuing to push up it's looking like it is holding that support at about 26 40 heading into the after hours here so this could be a potential trade for tomorrow and just to start off with the stocks that I'm watching tomorrow guys TVIX is at the top of my list due to my gut feeling that we are probably now I'm not saying 100% guys because I don't want to lead you the wrong way you have to do your own research of course but my personal feeling right now my gut feeling is telling me 
that we are going to sell off a bit tomorrow, whether it be a couple, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0.7%, maybe 1% in the SPX. That's what my gut feeling is telling me. And if that does end up happening, you know, TVIX can offer a nice solid margin of profit tomorrow as a potential day trade. So I'm watching TVIX 100% tomorrow. And for those of you guys that don't know, Tesla stock, they actually have their Model Y um, reveal tonight, I believe. I think it's late Eastern Standard Time. And I don't know if this is going to have any impact on the stock, but just because of this, I'm watching Tesla. Tesla stock very closely tomorrow as well. And today, Tesla actually did pretty decent, right? Up about a dollar, not too crazy of a move, but still it ended up opening or closing the day rather green up about 0.35%. But we did actually see a spike in Tesla stock this morning up to about 295. I think it opened up at about 290 or something like that. And we ended up pushing up to 295. Then we sold off and we can see here it's selling off a bit, you know, after market hours. But let's say, you know, Model Y unveil, whatever goes, um, you know, whatever happens with that, that ends up fluctuating the stock tomorrow. I think this could be a potential play tomorrow, especially since it did pop up to 295 here and we did get that nice little pullback of about 2%. Let's say we do end up holding these levels heading into the market tomorrow and we slowly start to push back up. You know, this could be a nice little profit margin opened where we could end up capitalizing on the continuation here of the uptrend. So ideally, I would like to see Tesla, you know, open up at around 290 ish and continue this push for me to get in as a day trade or a potential entry as a swing trade. So of course, I'll let you guys know what I'm doing, you know, in the next market update video. And of course, in the discord group chat, which is linked down below in the description box. But that's what I'm looking at in terms of uh, Tesla stock here. And in terms of some other ones in my watch list, guys, UWT was one that I was watching today, but we really did never, we never got that pullback that I was waiting for that I wanted to see before entering that I talked about in yesterday's video. We ended up popping up to about $17 this morning, $17.15. But you know, I don't want to get in quite yet, guys, because I do see potential here in crude oil pulling back a little bit before we do end up seeing a further push up. And for those of you guys that watched my video yesterday, you know that we broke out of the horizontal channel here in crude oil. And now I want to see a little pullback to the top of this resistance, which is now a new support for it to hold that level and slowly start to push up before entering a position in UWT. And it honestly looks like we actually had a little slowdown today um, you know, in crude oil, we see the consolidation literally all day. So what this is telling me is that we're either consolidating before we push up to a new high, right before we push up to a higher level, or we're consolidating before, which I personally want to happen before we pull back down to around the 58 level, which would open up a great margin on a UWT. So UWT, honestly, guys, I guess you could put this one on the top of my list because it it has a lot of it has a lot of potential in my opinion especially if this pulls back we hold this level we're going to have a ton of potential up to the next resistance on crude oil which we know which we know now is at about $61 and of course the RSI is pointing to crude oil being overbought and I believe UWT is overbought as well. They're both overbought, so a pullback would open up a better opportunity in these, uh, you know, in this combo that I trade a lot here on the channel. So Facebook today, guys, actually dropped about three dollars, down about two percent, which right now really it shows that we got rejected by that 170 uh, resistance, right? Remember, I was talking about this in my three swing trade video. I think it was in my three stock some swing trading in March video. I was talking about how we were holding this level as a new support to potentially fill up to the next gap here at about $180. But of course, that did not happen. We saw the pullback down to about uh, 170. And oh my God, are we in the 160s right now? Holy crap. What happened here, guys? Wow, this is a live reaction. Wow, 170 down to 166. Let's see some live news here. What is going on right now? 
two top Facebook executives leaving company. Facebook's Chris Daniels to leave company. Zuckerberg's Cox has, has discussed his interest in doing something else for a few years. What is going on here, guys? I have to do some research after this video, but Facebook stock, holy crap, it took a huge little tank there after market hours. I honestly hope it continues to go down because you know me, guys. I like buying at the dip. I would love for Facebook to get back to this level. Not saying it's going to happen, but if it does end up happening, I would love for that to happen. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what ended up happening on Facebook stock. I'm sure I'm going to do the research and already know the answer to that after I do film this video. But just just for um, you know collaboration and uh, conversation, just drop a comment. Let me know what ended up happening with Facebook here after hours. That's probably, it could be because of the two executives leaving. You know, people don't like when they see, uh, you know, higher level executives leave companies. That's kind of a warning sign in many cases, but in Facebook's case, um, you know, I don't think that's too big of a warning sign due to the massive company Facebook is and due to, you know, how much potential the company does have. But again, I'm going to do my research here uh, you know, after I do, uh, you know, finish off this video. Another one I wanted to talk about today was gold, guys. Gold, we saw a big rejection here on the 180 SMA uh, resistance on the 184 hour chart, but we're holding the support on the 50 SMA here on the 184 hour. So let's say tomorrow we end up successfully holding this level. I think JNUG is going to be an awesome, awesome play, which is the bull ETF that trades on gold guys and gold obviously took a big hit today which is why this was down eight percent so the margin of profit was opened and that's what i'm going to be looking for a potential gap fill back up to about 11.35 you know if if gold does end up confirming that bounce and if gold does not confirm that bounce let's say we continue to sell off i think jdst is going to be a good uh, you know, good ETF here to play. You know, it does seem like it is reversing here. It has a higher low from the previous. Now, all we need to see is a break out of this 180 on the 50 SMA resistance. I think that could end up happening if we do end up seeing gold getting back down to the 1270, 1250 levels that we were at, you know, a couple of months back. That is what I'm personally watching here in terms of uh, gold. So I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys. A lot of interesting things are going on right now in the markets, guys. You know, we see Facebook dropping. That's pretty interesting. I want to see what's going on there. We see, you know, UWT potentially opening up as a cool play tomorrow. The gold futures are seeing some price action here. Very, very interesting. The markets are at interesting levels right now. Are we going to pull back? I'm super excited for tomorrow and the rest of, you know, this month. Honestly, it's going to be an awesome month the rest of this month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time that I make a video. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching again. Peace out.